Hi everyone, welcome to Gold Price. And in this video, we'll have a look at the Ryzen 5 3500X. Yes, you've heard of it. And yes, you've heard that it's available only in China. But apparently, later on, AMD has decided to make it available in other parts of the world as well. And it's now in Malaysia, though my unit is a um, China unit because I got it from a friend who bought it and decided not to use it. Um, that story aside, if you've seen my other video about the semi-lockdown here in Malaysia, my wait for this uh, processor to arrive was uh, quite a few days. My friend sent it on a, on a Thursday. It's expected to arrive on a Friday, but it never did. And on Monday, I had to leave my comfortable home to collect it from the postal service center. Well, regardless, it's here. I've tested it. So without further ado, let's dive into the details of the Ryzen 5 3500X. The Ryzen 5 3500X is a 6-core, six 6-thread six processor. It has no SMT like the rest of the models. Unlike the 3600 and the 3700X that has 4.4 GHz boost clock, the 3500X has a max boost clock of only 4.1 GHz. And then there's the Ryzen 5 2600 that costs a bit less but has SMT enabled. This means that it has 12 threads. The 3500X is at 80% the price of the 3600 and around half the price of the 3700X. Let's look at the productivity benchmarks first. In Blender, we see that the Ryzen 5 3500X is clearly disadvantaged with the lack of SMT where workloads utilize multiple cores and threads. Same with DaVinci Resolve 16. While the Ryzen 5 3600 can match the Ryzen 7 2700X despite having lesser cores, the Ryzen 5 3500X's total lack of SMT sets it back quite a fair bit with even the cheaper Ryzen 5 2600 outperforming it. Based on my old numbers of the second generation against third generation Ryzen, the second generation Ryzen performed at around 85% the capacity of the third generation when it comes to gaming. The Ryzen 5 3500X here is disadvantaged with the lack of SMP and peak boost clock, but out of the box, it performs at around 94% of what the higher end models can. Starting off with Metro Exodus, the Ryzen 5 3500X matches all the other models. In Red Dead Redemption 2, the Ryzen 5 3500X matches the Ryzen 7 3700X on average frames but loses out on the 1% lows, and it closes the gap when overclocked. Given that the average is maintained while being lower on the 1% lows, this means that it could be generating reasonably high frame rate across the benchmark session. In the Division 2, we see the same as before, having the average frame rate maintained and with lower 1% lows, but it's within perfectly acceptable performance range and it closes the gap when overclocked. In Shadow of the Tomb Raider, the average frame rate is close, but the 1% low is quite a distance and barely catching up when overclocked. In Counter-Strike, the picture is a little different. The 1% low is the same across all these processors, but the average frame rate is higher as the clock speed increases. From now on, you see the charts change to a different pattern, starting with Dota 2 where the 1% low and average frame rates gets higher as the clock speed increases. However, even with overclock, the Ryzen 5 3500X is still quite a distance from the Ryzen 7 3700X. In World War Z, the chart goes in steps again, but this time their numbers are really high and very close, so there's literally no performance difference. In Far Cry 5, it's steps again, but this time the gap is great and the overclocked Ryzen 5 3500X lands itself between the stock 3500X and the 3700X model. The same it is for Assassin's Creed Odyssey. The 3500X, while not too far from the 3700X on average, it is still far behind on the 1% lows and the overclock resulted in both bars landing in the middle point. And lastly, we have Ghost Recon Breakpoint where the average isn't too far away but the 1% lows can't be salvaged even with some overclocking done. Running the Ryzen 5 3500X in the very minimal setup and having it run Blender 
as a load test, I saw that the system peaked at 110 wall draw. Actual power draw is expected to be around 100 watts considering this is an 80 plus platinum power supply. As for the thermals, the stock cooler performs very well. In my 30 degrees Celsius ambient temperature, the 3500X peaked at 79 degrees on stock and up to 92 degrees on 4.2 GHz overclock. Alright, so we come to the end of this video. The Ryzen 5 3500X definitely deserves a gold badge. It is an overclockable processor, but even if you don't overclock it, out of the box, you can get some 94% of the performance of the higher price processor. And even with my overclock using the stock cooler alone, I get some 97% out of the 100% of the performance of the higher range processors. Definitely, it is a processor that I would regard as value for money. That's all for now. Thank you for watching guys and I'll see you in the next one. Bye bye.